Northside parents recently testified to the school board about the experience gap, noting that schools with the most students of color and children in poverty have the least experienced teachers. Is this a problem? And if so, what would be done to close the experience gap? Many questions, including this one, come to the back of the issue of equitable distribution of district resources. Our teachers choose to leave schools with more students of color and students from low income background because those schools are not see receiving adequate resources or support to provide the level of service needed to see widespread student success. The new teacher contract lowers class sizes to 18 in priority schools. This is a step in the right direction. When we enforce progressive ideas and provide adequate resources and support to our most troubled schools, teaching positions will become more attractive in the schools that are currently troubled. I believe that a good solution to the experience gap is to incentivize beyond monetary incentives, which is usually our go-to. Um, I believe that we can promote recognition type programs where we are highlighting and promoting best practices and um, acknowledging the good work that is happening in our district. Um, I believe that we can incentivize seasoned experienced teachers to mentor least experienced teachers to be able to find confidence in their profession, to elevate their profession, and to um, learn, learn from each other. Um, I think that this mentorship program or apprenticeship program, professional apprenticeship program could also help us to begin to chip away at the belief gap or the hope gap. We have eight schools that have teachers uh, with the average, years, ex average year experience under 10 years and uh, two of those are because of French immersion. We couldn't find French teachers and Ramsey was a new middle school last year, two years ago. And uh, the rest of the schools have seven to nine years experience. Now, on top of that, they have percent higher percentages of new teachers, uh, 14, 20 percent of new teachers. So, yes, it is a problem, uh, especially when, like Lucy Laney, the class sizes have grown to 26 in kindergarten. That, that is a big problem. So one thing that we do is we have implemented co-teaching models. We have put more supports in those schools. And what I hope to see happen, because we have a lot of schools with very high minority populations, very diverse communities that have senior teachers, st the leadership's been stable, the community has been more stable, the community attends the school, uh, 80 to 90 percent of Southwest Minneapolis attends the community schools versus 30 to 50 percent in North and Northeast. And so those are things, I, if teachers feel like they are becoming part of a community and trust the leadership in the building, they will stay in that school because they have a vested interest and become invested in the culture of that school. So those are things that I, the stability is a big piece, but also the supports um, for the teachers. And with weighted student funding, we're looking at possibly a weight being you have new teachers in your building, which there is an impact and we need to develop those teachers and not stress them out so that they leave and and don't make it a career. Oh yes, it, it is a definite problem. Um, I, there was an article that was recently done in the Star and Tribune that, that spoke specifically to this. And I think we need to, as a district, reallocate our funds to these schools uh, where these teachers are and give them um, every ounce of support that we can. Um, not just financially, but also uh, moral support. Uh, a teacher, ment a, a strong and robust teacher mentoring program uh, is what I've heard other you know parents and teachers across the district suggest. You know we need uh, those teachers need that extra moral support in the classroom. Uh, they need it uh, before the school day and after the school day, uh, and that by mean by any means is not an easy task. But that is something that I really support, um, and, and re reallocating as much funds to those schools to support those teachers as they begin their careers. I heard uh, Northside parents and and actually some Southside parents. Um, complain about this experience gap uh, back in 1998 when the NAACP was gathering evidence for its uh, uh, suit against the state for failing to give uh, Minneapolis students uh, adequate education. And um, 
I've been, uh, I started raising this issue and um, the, there, there's a Minnesota Administrative Laws, uh, Chapter 3535 relating to equal opportunity in education requires the district to monitor these types of gaps, uh, such as you know uh, racial disparities in uh, exposure of students to inexperienced teachers, and um, the district did that for a few years, and then they stopped doing that. Uh, they didn't, and when they were really supposed to, they had they have a five-year um, five strategic plan that's in the seventh year um, that doesn't address input gaps uh, like this. And when, by law, they're supposed to. I mean, the, the failure to do so is, um, uh, violates um, uh, the um, Title VI of the uh, Civil Rights Act of 1964 uh, and the uh, Equal Protection Clause of the 14th, uh, 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, according to the um, um, Minnesota Administrative Rules, uh, Chapter 3535. I'll, I'll stop at that.